We are officially live. Welcome everybody. Hey, um, we're gonna let some people pop on. We're we're streaming into our YouTube channel and our Facebook group, um, and then a couple. I think I think we're also streaming on LinkedIn on my LinkedIn page. Yeah. <laughs> but um, just want to welcome everyone to another Cook and Chat. We are so excited to have the famous Javon from <laughs> Vegan Eating. Everybody, I'm not kidding, Javon, you've got a big fan club. Like yeah. I'm, I'm in there. I should, you know, I should be like the fan club leader maybe. Yeah. I don't know, or maybe Cersei, one of us should be. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But we are so happy to have you here, Javon. You know, we, um, I don't know how, I think I found you just scrolling, you know, cause I look at a lot of vegan cooking and vegan mm -hmm. recipes. And you popped up in my feed once, and and what took me back was not just the simplicity of the recipes that you mm -hmm. were making, but the way you were able to like just quickly clip it together and take you know like a bunch of you know raw ingredients or and then turn it into something spectacular. And then I I, I said, oh, that sounds interesting. I think I liked it. And then I kept scrolling, and then you came back. And then you came back and then I started noticing a trend and the trend was make your own. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't know. It must've been like the yeah. third or fourth time. Yeah. Like, I am following this guy. I am yeah. going to follow yeah. him. And so, <laughs> yeah. so if you are watching and you are not following healthy vegan eating, do it right now. Like yeah. just, just pause, go to your phone and just start following him because he's got some amazing videos. He's got a great YouTube channel. We mm -hmm. have him, we have him, we, we recorded a podcast with him, which we're going to release um, at mm -hmm. some point. I'm, I'm, we're still working on the date of that release, but we're thrilled to have you Javon. And we are making today Jamaican curry. Is that right? Throw in the word style, Jamaican style curry, because I learned uh, uh, doing this that anytime I associate a dish with a culture, someone's going to get me. They're going to say, that ain't Greek, that ain't Mexican, <laughs> that ain't, so, you know. So yeah. I've learned to put the word style so yeah. that it infers that it's my rendition of, of what that dish is. So Jamaican style curry, yes. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm glad you put that. That's, that's, <laughs> nice. that's a nice way to do it. It's true. And Jamaicans, I'll tell you this, Javon, are probably one of the most pickiest out there that will do that. My parents are from Jamaica. And like I said, I tell Gigi all the time about the Jamaicans coming for people in the comments like, no, you didn't do it this way and that way. So you got it right on the nail. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens. It definitely happens. You know, I did Jamaican patties. And I didn't have a single complaint. Like people, well, you probably lots did it of right. Jamaicans. Did it right, uh, I guess I did. I guess yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, if you didn't do it right, Jamaicans are coming for you. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> right. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Okay. So I'm super excited because all the ingredients, I mean, these are ingredients that are very easy to get at most any grocery store. You know, it's not, you know, anything that is going to be difficult to find. There's not a lot of ingredients with this recipe, which is also nice. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it seems like it's a one pot meal. Would you say that's the case, Javon? Absolutely. And, you know, simplicity is a good thing. I mean, some, some dishes are more involved. But this one is really straightforward. And I always tell people, don't let the lack of a long ingredient list fool you. This is full of flavor, um, has lots of, lots of good flavor to it. So three spices, um, some garlic and onions. But man, it's, a, it's like I said, it's a lot of flavor in this dish. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get this party started. So what's the first <clears throat> thing we do? So the first thing I do now, I, I got to say, you know, I've, I've done this a lot of times, so I pretty much eye it on my end, even though I know I sent you guys a recipe and I have a recipe out there. But I'm going to say add a little water, maybe a quarter cup or so um, mm -hmm. to your rod. Uh... There you go. And then I'm going to turn it on what would be like medium high. Okay. okay. All right. And, um, and then once we do that, we're going to go ahead and add our uh, onions. All right. And you guys have the measurements, right? You, you, you got it yep. situated on that end. Okay. Yeah. Uh, onions and, and garlic also. Going to add the garlic also. Okay. I'll add the garlic as well? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm. 
And uh, one thing I do is um, I keep some water near me because, you know, with, with the whole process, until you add the, the you know, a, a bigger amount of water, um, mm -hmm. if the water starts to dissipate too quickly and it starts to get dry, you want to add a little more. Uh, but right now, we're just trying to let this uh, generate some heat. And mm -hmm. the idea is to cook the onions until they're like partially soft, start to get a little translucent before our next step. So we're just going to let these uh, heat up until okay. they're uh, until they're simmering a little bit. All right. So Javon, we talk a, talk a little bit about this no oil concept because you know when we're well, you know what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm gonna talk a little bit about not sauteing with water. I think a lot of people feel like. If I'm not using oil, then it's not going to be flavorful. Or I won't be able to do it. Talk about this whole concept of the water saute. No, no doubt. You know, I used to think that too. I'm like, how do you saute something with, without oil? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, particularly when you're vegan and you're, and you're cooking a lot of vegetables, vegetables exude water. You know, they're mostly water. Um, so, so something like this, even though we add a little water to the bottom of the pan, um, you really don't need oil to keep it from sticking. And then as far as flavor, I always say, let your seasonings be your flavor, right? Yeah. I don't need a lot of oil. Oil doesn't add a lot of flavor anyway, in my opinion. It adds a little bit, but not a lot. Yeah. You would never miss it. You would never miss it. So you add a little water, then you don't have to worry about the sticking. And then we're going to let the seasonings and the foods be the flavor and not just try to create some flavor by adding a bunch of, you know, 120 calories a tablespoon is right. what oil is. So you're adding a lot of empty calories. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up that 120 a tablespoon, Javon, because a lot of people who um, are part of our group are trying to lose weight. Um, and this is an easy way to shave off some calories. It's just omit the oil and use water to saute. Absolutely. If, if you're trying to lose weight at all, um, and mine is starting to bubble just a little bit, I'm going to cook them a little longer, though, maybe another two minutes. Okay. But if you're trying to lose weight at all, one of the best favors you can do for yourself is to eliminate or at least minimize oil. And nothing is high caloric as oil is. 120 per tablespoon, 4,000 calories per pound, um, mm -hmm. empty calories, no fiber. So your body pretty much stores it as fat. So right. uh, yeah, oil, oil is out. And, and you won't miss it. That's the beauty of it. You won't miss yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. All right. We got we have several people just saying hello. Hi, ladies and gent. Hello. So hello, everybody. I can't see who's posting, though. So sh feel free to post your name, too, so we can <laughs> say your name. So, my, so on my end, I'm gonna go about another minute, minute and a half. Um, okay. You know, we're all using different stoves. So yours may be a little sooner, or a little later but I'm going about another minute and a half before um, I add our seasonings. Okay. And are both, are, are both of you guys oil free also? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, our, uh, oh, it's Marie. Hey, Marie. <laughs> yeah, the, the recipe website, Daniel's Plate, is completely oil free, sugar free, um all of that as well yeah nice nice yeah and you know <clears throat> one thing about that you know i'm salt free also mm -hmm. when i put but i add salt to my recipes to the list and then i'll say salt to your own taste yeah um, and so i really don't like to discourage people I, you know just because i'm oil free and salt free and wheat free and all those things yeah. doesn't mean that you have to be you know, you, you get in where you fit in and then you make the adjustments and, and try to make improvements. So anyone out there who is still leading oil or salt or any of those things, um, mm -hmm. don't feel like you can't be a part of my space anyway. You know, right. Um, right. it takes a little time for most people. Right. Yeah. But yeah. And then the nice thing about the salt, you know, sometimes we might offer things like maybe coconut aminos is a lesser version. Absolutely. Miso is another alternative yep. that doesn't have, you know, it's like same side effects as salt. So there are some alternatives as well if you want a salty flavor without that higher sodium too. Absolutely. I'm gonna add a little more water because my water is getting pretty low here. And um, and once it starts boiling again, we're gonna add our seasonings. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got um, some allspice and some thyme. And some curry powder. 
And some curry powder, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I got some curry powder straight from Jamaica, guys. Oh, <laughs> nice. Mm. But a, a big thing curry. Nice. That's mm -hmm. legit. Hey, Javant, have you used um, scotch bonnet pepper sauce yet? Um, Pepper sauce, I have not. Yeah. Or I even the pepper itself. Yeah, um, yeah, I, you know, I, usually when I'm adding like a, a pepper, I like the chipotles a lot. So yeah. I use those a lot, but I've used a scotch bonnet too. I, I like those. Yeah. Cersei got me on to scotch bonnet <laughs> pepper sauce. All right. Ooh, this smells so good. Doesn't mm. it? Doesn't it? I Ooh. know. That smells you good. know, I was just going to do the same you, thing when, you, when metal, you get those sorry. spices in there. All right. Um, so we're putting the... Oh, yeah. That smells amazing. And again, I'm adding a little water as I go, as I see that it's getting uh, to the point where my water's evaporated completely. I want to keep a little water in here still at this point. Yeah. And right now we're just trying to mix it and just get the onions and the garlic saturated really well uh, yeah. with the seasonings. And like you said, man, it smells so good. Oh yeah, so good. It, it makes kind of like a little gravy or a paste or something. Absolutely, yeah. that's the idea. <laughs> that is the idea. Mm. And if you find that it's starting to get too sticky, um, either add a little water or turn your pan down a little bit or both, but you don't want it to stick to the point where you're having to scrape it off. Yeah. yeah. Sludgy, but not sticky. Okay. That allspice is like so good. Mm -hmm. and the curry powder and the thyme all yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, these three together make an excellent, excellent flavor. How you guys looking? I think I think it's looking good. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So mine looks like it's at the point now where it's nice and sludgy. It's starting to boil a little bit. I'm gonna turn my pan down a little and add my sweet potatoes. Okay. Now, um, now I'm adding a lot, you know, you know, just to your discretion, though. I think it's about two and a half cups is what I add, but, you know, you're welcome to add more or less. The okay. main thing about the sweet potatoes, guys, mm -hmm. is that sweet potatoes tend to cook a little faster than regular potatoes. Yeah. So I cut them into bigger chunks okay. um, so that uh, so that they won't, like, just get too mushy too quickly, won't cook too fast. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, and once you get those in there, we just want to, again, mix it and get them nice and saturated with everything else. Yeah, I got mine big and chunky. And, you know, traditionally, this is done with regular potatoes, right? White potatoes? White um, potatoes. But... Yeah, but I, I don't eat a lot of white potatoes. Pretty much any time that I'm making a dish with potatoes, uh, with the exception of my vegetable soup, I'll put a little bit of red potatoes in there. But yeah. other than that, I'm I'm using uh, I'm using sweet potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you get all that beta carotene, you know. You yes, you, yes. Yeah. And and more fiber, so you know they uh, digest a little more slowly. Yeah. So mix it in. Yeah, you want to get it saturated really well yeah. there. And once you do, um, okay, now in, in my recipe, it says that you're going to add your water now. Mm -hmm. I happen to have some, um, some mushroom broth that I had left over from a recipe I just made. So I'm going to use it instead. Okay. But typically, typically I use water. Um, so uh, we're going to add that now. And you want the water, <clears throat> again, it depends on, on your setup here. I've got this really nice, huge pan here, but 
you want your water to come up and not quite cover the sweet potatoes completely. Yeah. You want them to come pretty close to, to the top of the level of the sweet potatoes. Uh, I think you guys did a better job than me. Can you see my pan, Will? Can you see, like, in it? I don't think so. Like, yeah. I can see yours. Yeah, we can see yours. Okay. Okay, yeah. good deal. So, um, so you're going to add your water like I did there. And then I'm going to turn my pan back up a bit because I turned it down a, a couple times. Okay. So we did not add the jalapeno peppers yet, right? You know what? I, I'm glad you said that. Um, I forgot to buy mine. It, so if you got it added, I'm so sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. It. Yeah, I left mine at, you know, I went to the store and I got back. I was like, God, I didn't grab a jalapeno pepper. So I didn't even think about it. But yes, you're right. You want to add your jalapeno. Yes, okay. absolutely. Put that in there. Should I cover it or leave it uncovered? What do well, you, you know what? I wanted to talk about that a bit because mm -hmm. one of the main things with using the sweet potatoes here yeah. is that um, if you look at if you look at your liquid right now, it's very clear and 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 very wet, right? Yeah, right. We, want, we want it to get blocky and thicker, and to do that, we're going to cook it, and then the starches from the sweet potatoes are going to start to exude, and it's going to mm -hmm. start to thicken the whole sauce. But you don't want to cook it so much that your sweet potatoes turn to mush. Yeah. Right? So keep it keep it uncovered. Oops, it looks like he dropped off. Uh-oh. Javon, come back, Javon. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. All right, go, hold on. We're, we're bringing I, you back. I, yeah, you're back, back. You're back. Yeah, somehow yeah. you got dropped off. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, yeah, somehow you dropped off just for like one, like one or two seconds. But, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, you, you were talking about... Um, Covering or uncovering? You said leave it uncovered? Yeah. I like to leave it uncovered until okay. I see it starting to simmer. And then yeah. at that point, and you could add your beans now. I usually wait until it's simmering a little bit to add my chickpeas. Um, yeah. But if you want to add them now, you could. But I'm going to wait until I see mine simmer. I'm going to add my chickpeas and then cover. Okay. okay. So we can let it simmer a little. All right. All right. Yeah, we got Vanessa watching. Hey, Vanessa. She loves curry. All right. Now, now, Cersei, one thing that um, some of my um, Jamaican followers wrote me about this particular <laughs> dish is it ain't. <laughs> they said it ain't curry. You didn't put no coconut milk in there. So, yes, I you know, coconut milk. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's something that that you would typically put. I'm sure you could, and it'd be even you better. You could, but I don't always do it. But you definitely could. Coconut milk. That is definitely a big thing. They usually put coconut milk in there too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you. We use the coconut milk. We will use, like sometimes people use the ones from the can that are really yeah. high fat. But if you use, I, sometimes we might just dilute the actual straight coconut milk itself. Yeah, we'll, we'll use this a lot, Javon, in some of our recipes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm very familiar with that brand. Whole Foods yeah, it's, that. yeah. It's, it's diluted enough. So the saturated fat, as long as you're not drinking the whole carton, yeah, it's, it's not bad. Yeah, because that's my thing. I, I, I only eat coconut about a couple, two, maybe three times a year because I don't yeah. like to eat saturated fat. Uh, yeah. And I typically just use the coconut itself and, and, and do what I do. But um, for those who, you know, want to have it, you certainly could add it uh, from whatever, you know, works for you. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you just eat the coconut or do you make your own milk from the coconut? Is that make, my own, make my own milk from it. Yeah, that's from how I grew up with my mom do it. She used to cut up the coconut, put it in the blender, and then kind of squeeze out the milk. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right, so mine is starting to simmer now, so I'm going to go ahead and cover it. Okay. And once I cover it, it usually takes about 15, 20 minutes before it gets to where I want it. I usually check it a couple times because, again, the main thing you don't want your sweet potatoes to turn to mush. You want them to cook just enough to be soft, add the starches to thicken up the, you know, to thicken up the sauce, but not, but not to overcook. So I'll check periodically on that. Okay. Right. I'm gonna add some chickpeas too. Okay. Oh yeah, let me throw my chickpeas in there. <clears throat> And also, guys, you know, again, I'm, I'm salt-free, but if you were going to add salt, now would be the time. 
um, to go ahead and add, you know, whatever salt you would like. I think in the recipe I put two and a half teaspoons because this makes about eight to 10 servings. So I think I put two and a half teaspoons, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I always tell people salt to your taste, um, whatever that is. And now would be the time for that. Okay. Yeah, we don't normally, well, I don't normally add salt to my recipe. So all. all right. I can hear it simmering in there. Yeah. Nice. So if you, if you guys have any questions about what we're making or anything like that, um, or, or questions about any of other of Javad's recipes, you can go ahead and just put it in the comments. And so Javad, um, this, this recipe, do you, do you eat it by itself or do you serve it with like a rice or something like that or, or a quinoa or any kind of whole grain? Well, you certainly could put it over quinoa or millet. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, I'll, I'll eat this with a salad, though, and this this does for me. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> but if I were if I were you know having company and I was gonna you know make this uh, for someone, I would probably put it over millet or quinoa. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. sounds good. Yeah. Well, here's a question I have for you, Javon. With okay. All the recipes that you make. Are, like, do you have people that are eating these recipes and helping you eat them, or, or, or how, does, how does that flow work with the food? Because it's like it's like it's I don't, I don't know. Maybe you just do batch filming, and maybe it doesn't look like it's a lot. But like, I see all these desserts and these dishes. Like, how do you manage the eating piece of it? Yeah, with the, the desserts in particular, that that could be an issue because I don't eat a lot of desserts, uh, yeah. frankly. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll call on my daughter. Or my friends and she'll come and get some or I'll, I, I basically give the desserts away honestly a lot of times i'll put them in the freezer and when someone comes over i'll, I'll break them out okay. but things like this like the curry yeah. again i'll just i'll i do my i do my recording from my cooking show on fridays yeah um and so over the weekend i'll eat a smaller salad instead of this ginormous salad i'll eat a smaller one with whatever i make um okay. and so this this would make probably you know maybe four meals for me right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because you're 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 a runner too, is that right? You you like to yeah, run? I run and, and and lift weights and work out and all that stuff. Yeah, so, this, um, this is good running food, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, this is good stuff. <laughs> this is this is good. Fuel. This is good fuel. Do you you run too? I yeah. Well, you know what? I was running last year and I got an injury, and so now I'm just doing cycling. But I started run walking again. I hope to get back into running. Um, hopefully in the next few months or so. But yeah, uh, yeah I, I tore my meniscus. Ooh. Um, I think I did it at the dog park. I was um, I was at, at the dog park with my a dog I just adopted from Mississippi. We drove back from Mississippi to Washington State. We had the best like girls trip. It was so <laughs> much fun. And anyway, we were at the dog park and there was just like a like a bunch of dogs like running towards me you know they're just like warp speed and I think what happened was I I kind of twisted like too quick and I didn't move my foot with my twist mm -hmm. and I think I just kind of got my knee out of whack because later that yeah. afternoon I started noticing it was hurting and then it was just getting worse and worse and so I ended up going to an ortho doctor and he, and he did an MRI and he was like yeah you tore your meniscus mm -hmm. So he had mm. to um, go in there and just it was orthoscopic, you know, outpatient thing where they just kind of trim the part yeah. that's torn. And then, mm -hmm. um, so basically that's why I haven't restarted my running. But at least you're able to still cycle, right? You're... Oh, I can cycle. That's my first love. Because you just did, what was the, the run you guys did? Was it the Ironman you guys just did? Oh yeah, we did an Ironman relay. Yeah, I did. I did the bike portion of it. Yeah, it was me and a couple other ladies from our group. Um, did the half Ironman uh, in Washington State here, Seattle, Washington. So, um, yeah, Mindy did the run, and and Stephanie did the swim. I did the bike, but yeah, I definitely want to get back into running. Even if I could just run like you know, three or four miles. I don't have to do like a marathon. I just miss the, you know, kind of the endorphins from, from running. And it's very social for me to run. So I kind of miss that part. 
but yeah so so you run with people usually yeah i mean okay. i i shouldn't say usually i i when i'm running what when i would run it would be part of my workout plan but usually when i would run it was with the objective of doing some kind of like event with people you know like we've done i've partnered up with some friends and we've done the the Ragnar relay. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's like a 200 mile foot race that you do with like 12, Ooh. it's like 12 people. So you leapfrog each other like every three or four miles. And um, you end up running maybe, I would say you end up running about 15 to 20 miles and it's very Ooh. social for me. So we like plan these trips and we like fly into these cities with our tennis shoes and our running gear. <laughs> And we just, we rent two vans and there's six in each van. And then we each have an assigned leg to run. And so it's just a lot of fun. You just do it like throughout the day and night until you finish. And so it usually ends up being like, I don't know, like 27, 30 hours to finish. <laughs> but wait, so one person runs 15 miles in one time, one interval? No, no, it's like one, you, you run. So like the first leg, might be like let's say i have the first leg i'll run like five miles and then the next person will run you know however many miles so then there's 11 people in front of me that run before i have to run again so oh, I see. Oh, I yeah see. so so you're running day and night and so you have to have all the gear you've got like you know like headlamps on and reflectors and blinky lights on the back because you're running like at two in the morning three in the morning sometimes depending on what leg you have wow and um it is a blast if you get the right people in the van it's the most fun like you've ever had in <laughs> life i mean it's really? like and and so many inside jokes get created with this with this event i mean it's so much fun but anyway i miss not being able to do that. So I'm looking forward to getting back into running so I can train and be ready for whenever my uh, my Ragnar relay friends call me up and say, hey, Gigi, meet me here in this month and this day. And I'll be like, OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I It's my midlife crisis issue, I guess. <laughs> So, so do you um, do you do anything to exercise in the meantime? Or are you doing anything? Oh yeah, else? cycling. Yeah. Oh, oh, you do the cycling. Okay. A yeah. lot of cycling. Yeah, yeah. My long rides are usually. I do some long rides. I'll do two and a half, three hours for a long ride. Um, I used to do more like four hours, but I cut back because I do a little more high intensity rides throughout the week. So today I just did an hour. Tomorrow I've got a ninety minute ride in the schedule. So um, definitely a lot of riding in my life. And, and then I do strength training and HIIT workouts. We, or or um, we have this Tabata class Cersei and I teach for our group. So we do Tabata. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, especially when we get to do burpees. Those are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway... All right, I'm gonna take a peek at mine because it's it sounds like it's simmering. I don't let's see. Yeah, it's simmering good. All right. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really getting soft very quickly. Yeah. Is it yeah, you you yeah. got the glass lid. That's a good that's a nice lid, Cersei. Oh, both of you guys have glass lids. <laughs> I I gotta get with the program. <laughs> <laughs> so Cersei, you're in uh, Washington State also? No, I'm actually in Georgia, right on the border of Jacksonville. So if I drive like two miles, I'm in Florida. So I'm on the most southern part of Georgia, southeast gotcha. Georgia. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, we um, we have a, a typical Pacific Northwest cool rainy day today. Um, yeah. So this is this is actually like the perfect meal for today, honestly. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that'd be perfect. I know my husband could smell it in the background. He's like waiting. Okay, when are you guys gonna be done with this? <laughs> <laughs> what does your shirt say? I can't read your shirt. Oh, it just, it's just a Daniel Fast, a bridge to Oh, that's sure. Okay. Got yeah. You. Yeah. Got you. 
Yeah, kind of. That's what we do. So, yeah. But um, any uh, any good movies, you guys, or TV shows you've been watching lately? I don't. I don't watch a lot of TV, honestly, um, yeah. or a lot of or a lot of movies for that for that matter. Um, yeah. At least not lately. Yeah. So, yeah. No, nothing for me. Yeah. Yeah. We, I haven't seen anything either. We we started watching um, the Equalizer on. I forget which channel it, it's on. Um, oh, Denzel. Yeah. No, no, it's with Queen Latifah. She's the Equalizer. Oh wow! Oh, boy. Kevin's like, we just started watching it. Kevin's like, I don't know if I buy into this. <laughs> I think I think he's still mad about like, like when um, you know in the X Men when they cast uh, Halle Berry as Storm, he's um, like, he was so mad. He's like, they should have picked Angela Bassett. Why did they pick her? She's not very believable. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So he, he I mean, Halle Berry, yeah. Sometimes the roles, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. She's beautiful, though, on the screen. I mean, that could be Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, but I, 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 I kind of like Queen Latifah in this role, but, you know, I don't know. All right, it's looking good, looking good. Yeah, so this really does check a lot of boxes, you know, nutritionally with um, with the chickpeas and the sweet potatoes. And then if you pair it with a green salad, that's like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't discount the uh, the onions and the garlic. Yeah. Um, you know, even the spices, every, everything that goes in here is super healthy. I mean, there's nothing, yeah. nothing lacking. Yeah, yeah. At all. And the curry powder, um, you know, has turmeric and um, black right. pepper. So it's got that anti-inflammatory benefit. Um, Absolutely. Not to mention it just smells and tastes amazing. And uh, I don't even, allspice, I'm not familiar with allspice. I mean, I use it in recipes, but I'm not familiar with like where it originates and all that, but it smells good. I love the smell of it. I need to- it Smells it. good, tastes good. It tastes good, excellent. yeah. So will you will you and your husband put this over a grain or what what will you do with this? How you know, you... I made I made some sorghum yesterday. Um so I got like over here, I'll show you. I made I have some leftover sorghum that I made. Okay. And um uh, cuz I had like a like a pack it was it wasn't much left in it, but I was like I just wanted to cook it just to use it up. And I, cause I made a kidney bean soup yesterday. So I'm like, I've got some leftover, so I'm gonna eat it with, we'll split this and, and have that and eat it up that way. Um, and does your husband eat the same things that you eat? He's yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. well, that's great, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, he, 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 he affectionately tells people, he just <clears throat> does what he's told. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, that, well, that answers that answers my next question. I was going to say who transitioned first, you or him? Well, I don't think it was you. We wanted, we we did it at the same time, but I'll be honest with you, Javon. He was he was ready before me. Like when I when I did make the decision to do it, he's like, "Okay, I'll do it with you." It's like real quick, and um, and so we um, you know, we just did it. At the, together at the same time and what happened is as I you know I went and got my uh, nutrition degree and um and and I'll be honest with you getting my master's in nutrition helped me understand like the biochemistry and everything but I didn't learn about plant-based nutrition in school you don't learn about that in school necessarily you learn about that when you go to the conferences and read the studies and um so it was kind of as I learned more about the role of food and inflammation in the body and everything, I started um, tailoring all of our, our food around health. And so what happened was my husband was starting to see the benefits of that through like his blood work panel and everything. And so he got to a point where he just said, 
whatever Gigi tells me to eat, I eat. <laughs> so, <laughs> Enjoy We've been it. eating this way for like 11 years now. Uh, over we have a question for you coming in, Javon. Somebody wants to know, how long have you been vegan? Well, um, this time, I would say about a little over three years. And I say this time because um, kind of the way it evolved for me is uh, initially, I just wanted to get healthier. And that was maybe 17 years ago was when I first started consciously thinking I want to eat better and uh you know it was a long journey and at one time I was vegan maybe seven or eight years ago uh but then I thought you know what why, why be vegan if I can add a little fish and then I don't have to worry about the b12 I don't have to worry about I think he froze uh-oh froze I'm on Oh yeah, you you froze you froze when you said you didn't want to worry about the B12, and then it froze. So. Okay, I don't know why I'm freezing. I'm just uh, I don't know what that is, but I'm glad I'm coming back. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Me too. No, I'm 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 saying to you that the fish was covering the B12, the zinc, the iodine, uh, the protein, the omega three. So fish covers a lot of the bases um, that are left uncovered if you're vegan. So yeah. to me, it was like, you know, why not just eat some fish? You know, I, I think I can be okay with that. Um, but then with the microplastics um, and the pollutants and the dioxides and all these things that are prevalent in fish, even a smaller fish now, I was like, nah, not, not, a, not a good idea. And so a, a little over three years ago was when I went vegan for the second and final time. Okay. And so I've been, I've been completely vegan, you know, three and a half years straight. Yeah, a lot of people don't know about the contaminants in fish. We actually published a blog article about not too long ago recently about the different contaminants that are found in fish. And um, yeah, the microplastics, the, um, the mercury, um, there's a lot of things that people don't know they're ingesting when they're eating fish. Um, right. It's not the same fish as uh, that uh, uh, Jesus multiplied. <laughs> <laughs> back in the day <laughs> no i hear you i mean you know um and that's the case with a lot what a lot of things the, yeah. even vegetables i mean you know we're yeah. not dealing with the same thing that they were dealing with you yeah. know uh many years ago it doesn't mean it is you know they're not good there's not value but right. things certainly do change so yeah. so um real quick my sweet potatoes are about where i want them to be but yeah. I have a little more water left than I want. It's not a stick, so I'm uncovering it so the water can dissipate a little faster. I think I'm the same. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna let that let my sauce thicken up, um, and then this is um, this is gonna be ready. Awesome. It's gonna be ready. So excited. Yeah. Yeah. Ready. Yeah. Somebody said Frankenfish. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, <what> it, <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's what we're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, it used to it, it used to be that everyone thought that the smaller fish were okay because the mercury doesn't persist in the smaller fish like it does the predatory fish. Right. But now, like you said, with the microplastics, the oxide, you know, it, not you know, all of them um, create problems. So yeah, yeah, you don't want that in your body. Yeah, um, he said we got yeah. Bell looking forward to making this recipe. Yes, Bell. Yes. And uh, some other folks, uh, looks delicious. I will try for sure. So Javon, have you always been someone that cooked or was this like a new learning process for you or were you just someone that always was into recipes? No, you know what? Um, I, I was always capable of cooking, but I didn't cook a lot, um, you know, because I was married and, and um, my ex-wife did most of the cooking. Yeah. Before that, I was with my mom. She did the cooking. I lived with my grandmother. She did the cook, you know. So um, out of necessity, I never had to cook. So I would only be in the kitchen, you know, when I felt the desire to be there. And that's the best way to do it. Um, but then when I had my health scare, um, guess what? No one knows how to cook this way. No one on it. Uh, and so you follow me? And yeah. so now it kind of necessitated that I figure out how to cook with no oil, no wheat, no sugar, and that kind of thing. And so, um, and so here I am. I got in the kitchen and start figuring it out. And now I love it. Now yeah. I love it. I love being, I love grocery shopping. Most people, I love shopping for, I might like shopping for food more than cooking. And <laughs> something about when I, I'm telling you, when I go in your t-shirt. Oh my 
God, are you, you kidding me? Start saying, what is it? She does romantic walks through the grocery. In the produce aisle. The produce aisle. <laughs> Say it again. Oh, yeah. I think I saw that somewhere. Yeah, yeah I, I saw that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. I love it. I love the produce section. Yeah. I love it. All yeah. that healthy food. I love I love going in there and seeing if there was something I've never had before or yeah. maybe I haven't had in a long time. And yes. Then buying a little bit of it and then yeah. adding it somehow into a recipe. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's amazing. <laughs> what I found is after going plant based, the the amount of food that I was exposed to, I found that I was just eating the same things before, but now. I've eaten so much more variety and like, it's like I'm eating better now than I was eating before. Even though you feel like going plant-based people think, oh, I'm going to be deprived in some way. But actually you end up eating a lot more variety <clears throat> yourself to so many different foods as before you were just eating like maybe 10 foods over and over and over. Now you're eating in abundance and such variety. So. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of that depends. I think ideally that's happening, Cersei, but a lot of people, I think, also become vegan and get stuck in that same mm. deal of just eating a, a, some of the same foods. And that's why if you go to my YouTube or my Instagram, I have a variety of things. I mean, I, I try to make it so that anything that you think, I can't give that up, so I'm not going to become vegan, I yeah. have a version of it, right? I have a version of it. And it's just as good, if not better. And mm -hmm. so that way there's no deprivation. You make the transition <laughs> and you have everything and more if you go to my page than you have when you're, you know, even before you made the transition to healthy. Yeah. Vegan. Yeah. And for those just tuning in, again, uh, it's at healthy vegan eating on Instagram. He's got a YouTube channel. Um, I think you have a Facebook page, don't you, Javon? I do. You know, I, I don't bring it up because I don't tend to it like I should. Okay. Um, oh. Because I'm so, I, I did the other platforms first. And so I just had a routine of answering all my DMs and my comments. But on Facebook, admittedly, you know, I'll probably answer like 10%, 20% of my messages. And I don't feel good about that. So I usually uh, don't ask yeah. people to go there. Um, okay. But, um, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm going to try to get better with that. But, but primarily Instagram and YouTube. YouTube. Okay. Oh, awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think, I think everybody's on YouTube. Like everybody, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm enjoying YouTube a lot. I'm enjoying the long format. When I when I first started posting on social media, my intention was just to do the 30 second videos. Yeah, um, and that's what I was doing. But everybody was like, "You should have a cooking show. You should have a cooking show." And so I was like, "Well, let me let me see what I can do with some long form stuff." And I enjoy that even more. I enjoy yeah. like really breaking it down and telling people step for step how to do it. And uh, and the response has been amazing. So I'm loving it. <laughs> When somebody says, don't leave us Facebook people out of the mix. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, listen, listen, I'm there. I'm on Facebook. I am there and I do post. But, um, and you know, listen, my standard from what I'm told is a lot higher than others as far as responding to people. I got this thing where if someone's nice enough to write me a message, I don't like to not respond, yeah. even if I'm busy. And so if you go to my Instagram, my YouTube, you'll be like, whoa, he responds to everybody. Look at all that. He yeah. responds to everybody. Facebook, I haven't been able to do that. Yeah. And so um and so I don't like it. But but I'm there and I'm posting and um yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get better. All right, so so uh yeah, so I think um looks ready. Mine looks ready. Yeah, I think it's ready. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna ch check my sweet Oh yeah, my sweet potatoes are perfect on point. You know, I cut mine really big. I think mine needs about another three to five minutes. But yeah. certainly, if you're where you need to be, um, then you can reduce that, oh, yeah. uh, reduce oh, that right. heat. That looks good. And uh, Cersei, how are you going to enjoy your, your curry? I'm are you just going to eat, eat it straight by, up? By my, it's, I'm going to eat it by itself with maybe a side salad as well because I'm actually traveling and I don't want to make anything extra, so... I am going to just eat it as is with a little side salad, just like you. Gotcha. But normally I would have this with a grain of sorts, though. So. Right. Apparently I'd put this over something. Yeah. Even with like um, some sauteed kale or spinach on the side, even that too. Absolutely. Yeah. Why not? Why not? <clears throat> Do you worry about um, 
Do you worry about oxalates with your spinach at all? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I eat spinach here and there, but I don't. I don't overdo the Swiss chard and the spinach, but I might integrate it in here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Spinach is the so so the, the foods with the oxalates, like you said, Swiss chard, spinach, Italian parsley, and beet uh, greens. Yeah. But, but of those four, I don't eat any of them regularly except spinach because spinach yes. is so yeah. healthy. Yeah. I mean, it's full of folate. It's full of iron. But not yeah. only that, when they when they when they test spinach against other vegetables, it's one of the most potent cancer fighters that there is in vitro. Yeah. So I, I eat spinach almost every day. I don't know why. Okay. Oh, absolutely. But, yeah. Absolutely. But I guess you would have to eat excessive amounts for it to really. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, unless you already have kidney issues or kidney stone issues or you know, or, or issues with uric acid or something like that. I, I, I don't, I wouldn't worry about it if you're not, you know, eating too much. So that's, that's yeah. the way I approach it. It's been yeah. no issue for me. So yeah, I love it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All I think right. Whenever you guys are ready to taste, I'm ready to taste. All right. I'm going to do something here. Mm. 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 I'm going to add a little bit of scotch bonnet. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I, just got I knew it. I knew you were going to do it, Cersei. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> did you take the seeds out of your jalapeno, Cersei? I did not. But okay. I, there wasn't a lot of seeds in mine. So. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Like All right. All right. Let's see. Hot. Mmm. That's good. Mmm. That's good. Mmm. 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 You were right about you were right about the sweet potatoes. Making them big. They're like perfect. Yeah. That's they're not mushy. Too. They're perfect. Perfectly. They're tender, but not mushy. And then the, the spice level is right on point. Not too spicy. It's yeah, and it's got like the flavor with the. I think with the time, it's kind of that subtle. What is that thing in the background kind of flavor? Yes, there you go. Yes. Yeah, and no salt, no salt needed. It's, mm. To me, it's perfect. I didn't put any salt. Mm. So sometimes it's like it's good to try your food without salt first. Yes, and yeah, <laughs> I agree a hundred percent. Yeah, you know, sometimes we salt food just out of habit, but I'm yeah. telling you guys, you don't need so this, good. this dish right here. This is delicious. Because the sweetness of the potatoes mixed with the spice, it just mm -hmm. has this energy that you really do not need salt. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Wow. Now, for people um, who, who, um, who are used to eating salt, <clears throat> they may not agree. They may think they need some salt. You yeah. know what I mean? So I don't want everyone watching to think, oh, I'll add no salt. You might not like it, but like you said, Cersei, you can start without it. And then mm -hmm. ratchet it up accordingly if necessary. And if not necessary, then great. You're leaving the right. stuff out. Right. And you'll mm -hmm. be surprised sometimes, because especially when you're eating something that has a sweet undertone, you know, be surprised that you don't really need the salt. Or at least it won't be as obvious for those who, you know, like you said, your palate hasn't adjusted yet. Mm. Yes. This is delicious. And what I love about this, Javant, is just a few ingredients. Like, yes. You know, sometimes yes. you a list of like 14 spices and this and that, but a simple two spices. It's curry and allspice, thyme. Three. Yeah, yeah. So three, three, three. Yeah, three spices. I put, yeah, yeah, three. And that's it. You know, it's not a lot of complication to it. Yeah. It's, it's not complicated. And then my favorite part of all is so healthy. I mean, you're talking about sweet potatoes, garlic, <laughs> onions. I mean, come on. You can't, you, you can't beat it. It's just yeah. a, a great, a great dish. And then, you know, um, you know, you can make a lot at once. So if you have a family or you want leftovers, I mean, it just covers all the bases, you know? How does this work freezer friendly? Have you froze this before and like pulled it back out? Or how, how do you, is it freezer friendly? I'm sure it is. I mean, most <laughs> stews and soups are. I haven't yeah. specifically, you know, put this in the freezer before, but I know it would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So if you made a lot and you didn't, couldn't finish, you could meal prep it for another time. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the idea too, Cersei. I mean, you want, I mean, if, if it's me, you want to make enough so that there are leftovers, you know, it's the beauty right. of it. So you, you're cooking one time, but you're getting two, three, four meals out of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is good, guys. Yeah, this is delicious. That's why I'm not real. Everything you see him on there doing, this is for real, guys. We're putting it <laughs> to the test. The food is yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. If anybody else is saying something. Yeah, somebody said after mm -hmm. eating in this way, you eventually lose the need for a lot of salt. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. that's a Dr. Furman thing, as I mentioned before. You know, initially you think, I can't do this, it's too bland, but yeah. your taste buds will recalibrate and then you'll learn to taste the natural flavors. And I mean, everything starts to burst with flavor once you get used to getting the salt and the sugars out. So yeah, 100% agree with that. Yeah. And give it time. Don't throw in the towel like after seven days, guys. Yeah. That's right. That's time, right. You have to be willing to put the investment in, mm -hmm. you know, it might be weeks, weeks, you know, eight weeks, 12 weeks, but you have to just be committed to the process. Because if you give up after three days, like, oh, no, that's it, <clears throat> days, that's not going to work. Uh, somebody says, how do you, I can't read that. <laughs> what is oh, it? no, no. Well, one person said this would be a great potluck dish, which, yeah. is, which, is, a, which is a great yeah. idea. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and then someone, I think, is making fun of us, Cersei. Have you two eaten this week? <laughs> Oh yeah, no. yeah. We're, we're just gobbling this up. Yeah, I know it's that good. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, you know, my 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 two things for me. One, I don't like eating. I know this sounds backwards, but I don't like eating food when it's hot because <clears throat> I found that for me, I'm kind of sensitive to it, and so I can't enjoy the flavors when I'm trying to make sure I'm not, you know, overdoing the heat. Mm -hmm. And then number two. Man, food is serious to me. Like when I eat, I like relax. I've got some bright light. You know, I got my lights set up here right now. I got two lights in front of me, two beside me. And mm -hmm. so I want to dim the lights and sit down and really relax and just really be into my food, man. It's a romantic thing with me, me and food. I just sit down, take my time. I'm in a good space. So so that's the only reason I haven't started eating yet. But trust and believe. I got my salad in the fridge and when we're done, I'll, I'll get to it. <laughs> So you, you do a lot of mindful eating, so that's good. Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Love it. That's great. Awesome. So before we sign off, any final comments uh, you have, Javon, for people who are watching? Um, uh, no. I mean, I, I don't know. If they have questions, I, I have answers. Or if you ask yeah. me something, I can answer it. But, you know. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, one of the things that I want people to walk away with is cooking can be fun. Like we're doing this over, you know, over a platform that allows us to stream to multiple places. But even if you're, um, even if, you know, you're cooking by yourself, you can cook, you know, using other platforms like FaceTime and Zoom and, you know, whatever, you know, even in, fa I think Facebook allows you to like do some FaceTiming as well. And, you know, sometimes cooking can be more <clears throat> or cook, cooking can feel a little lonely, especially when you're the only one eating this way. But just try to find creative ways to make it fun, you know, connecting with other people while you're doing it. Um, and I think, you know, if you, if, you look, if you have people who are in your community, like physically located in your community that are interested, it's always fun to like get together and cook in the kitchen. Um, because, you know, a lot of times your health starts in the kitchen and um, it's breaking free from carry out and, those drive through and all of that and just making your own food. And so we're so grateful, Javon, that you are here <clears throat> us to show us how much fun cooking can be and also to share one of your delicious recipes. And I want to encourage everyone again to check out Healthy Vegan Eating um, IG or YouTube and um, check out uh, the plethora of recipes that he's got, like a ton for everything. So, yeah. so Javon, you can... <laughs> you know out with the way you close out every one of your videos. Yes. You'll close us well, out. Well, well, before I close out, I just want to say, because Gigi, when you said that, 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 that created a thought for me. Yeah. I do want to say for those who aren't so confident in the kitchen, because I get mm -hmm. a lot of messages of people asking me, do I do cooking lessons? And of course I don't. 
Yeah. Um, but when my app comes out, which should be at the end of next month or early December, yeah. I'm going to have a calendar on there where people can schedule cooking sessions. So much like we just did now, not that I was teaching you guys, but yeah. just like we're doing face to face, I offer cooking lessons virtually for people. So if you're someone out there that wants to learn how to cook, bring me in your kitchen and I'll make it affordable. Um, and, and we'll in an hour block, just like we're doing now. And we can cook together. So, um, wow. so when my app comes out, that that might be something. Oh some wow, that's are interesting. So there's going to be an option that they can plug in to do a cooking class on the app with you. Yes. Oh, yes. Amazing. And and it's for couples or individuals. It doesn't matter. You know, we just like we're doing now. We FaceTime and yeah. I walk you through recipes and and we cook together. So that could be a a great catalyst for somebody who's trying to transition into healthier eating and wants to learn more. So thank you, Gigi. Uh -huh. That was perfect. That sounds absolutely amazing. That's going to be really exciting when it comes out. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, any everyone, last thoughts before we close? Yeah, out? just a comment. Someone said, "Love what you guys are doing." So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're 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 all. You know what? There are what eight billion people on this planet, <laughs> and you know we just need as many people as we can. Kind of showing people about healthy, whole food, plant based eating. Okay. And uh, we know that the chronic disease rates, especially in, in the United States, mm -hmm. um, are, are crazy high and food is often the culprit for that. And Absolutely. so we hope that, you know, that we're helping to change lives That's one person at a time and uh, mm -hmm. through, through healthy cooking, healthy recipes. So thanks everyone for joining. Thanks, Javon. And hey, Absolutely. you guys hang on. I'm just going to, I'm going to stop the broadcast, but y'all stay on. All right.